I homebrewed my 3DS and I absolutely love it. And this video is also going to be for maybe people who are on the fence and not sure if they want to homebrew their 3DS. And before I get further into it, um, I homebrewed mine after the eShop shut down, so this is like the latest and only version. So my first favorite thing is that you can install your games directly onto your 3DS from your cartridge. So like if you just want to have everything ready to go on your DS, you can do that or on your 3DS. If I accidentally say DS, I'm talking about the 3DS, but I might <laughs> continue saying DS. So it's nice to have everything on your DS ready to go. So like they essentially act like digital games, even if they were originally from the cartridge. And you're allowed to do that. Like you paid for the game, you're allowed to install it on your device. Um, according to YouTube, I have to say only install the games that you own and don't install games off the internet because I would never do that. My second favorite thing about homebrewing my 3DS is that you can back up your saves. So for example, Animal Crossing, obviously that's a game that lots of people pour literal days, if not years, into and if you lose your cartridge, you lose your world. Or if your 3DS stops working and you have just the digital version, you lose it as well. But from what I understand, the saves save onto your SD card, so if your 3DS stops working, you can take your backup world, or you can take your saves and your backups and put them onto another 3DS if you want to, or if you need to. Because let's say you're like me and you collect DSs, you can also just transfer all your files back and forth between devices if you want to. So it's just nice to have options, you know? My third favorite thing about homebrewing your 3DS is that you can install pretty themes onto it that are made by, like, anybody. So I know the 3DS did come with themes originally, but there weren't that many. But now you can install themes made by anybody, or you can even make your own. Like, I have a Sanrio one, and I'll show you that one. And I don't know, it's just nice to have a pretty background. Um, my fourth favorite thing, which is actually a big one, is homebrewing gets rid of the region lock. So let's say you get a Japanese 3DS um, because they tend to be a little bit cheaper. You can't play American games on it without homebrewing it. Like it, you can only play Japanese games on it, and vice versa. If you have an American uh, region 3DS and you want to play Japanese games, you can't. But if you homebrew it, that bypasses the region lock so you can play any games from anywhere in the world. I think the 3DS in like that era of um, Nintendo was the only era to have region locks which was weird so I don't know why they did that <laughs> but you can bypass all of it. So even though this is the last thing I'm gonna list today there's still a lot more stuff you can do with the homebrewed 3DS but you can also but the last thing you can do number five is emulation. With emulation you can play like older consoles on it so like you can play um, Super Nintendo, the original Nintendo, because the 3DS has much more powers than those older systems, so that it can literally run those older games on here. And even things like Game Boy and stuff, like it has the power to do it, but it has the power too, and you can. Um, obviously, sometimes, most of the time it's fine, but sometimes it can be a little bit wonky because, you know, Super Nintendo games are made for the Super Nintendo, but the 3DS can run them pretty well. So also, out of the box, it took me about an hour to homebrew, and the only reason why it took so long was because I was worried about messing it up, so I did, you know, like, I read every single instruction very slowly, and I didn't want to mess up, and I didn't, so, you know, somebody who might be a little bit better at this kind of stuff might take less time, and if you're like me and you just want to go really slow so you don't mess it up, you can do that too, and it really doesn't take that long. If you Like, if you go slow, you'll be okay. It's not that hard. It just takes time, if that makes sense. I'm trying to think what else there is. I don't think there's that much else. Because I understand homebrewing can be kind of scary. And this, again, this is all after the eShop closed. Because I remember I saw a lot on TikTok. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, make sure to hack your DS now before the eShop closes. I did it after it closed. It's fine. It's still very easy to do. Now, even after listing everything today, just make sure to do your own research and, like, the possible outcomes. Like, if you're... Like, there's a possibility of your DS to stop working when you homebrew it, but again, if you follow the instructions, I promise you'll be okay. Just make sure to go slowly over them and make backups and stuff like that, and you should be okay. So that's pretty much all for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this might help somebody who was, like, kind of on the fence of homebrewing or not. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.